And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Funny. Yes. What's your favorite type of jello? Uh I I I'm I'm a raspberry kind of guy. Okay. Do you know what my favorite type of jello is? What? Peter. Lemon. Peter Lemon Jello. Yes. Hi oh. That's a joke that I just wrote. Here's another one. Um <coughs> you know any sound technicians? No, I don't know any sound technicians. I know a bunch of sound technicians all over the world. I know one in England. I know one in London. And I know a Scottish one. And also, I know a Czech one, too. Czech one, two. Czech one, two. Oh. Testing. Testing. Sibilance. Sibilance. This, this, this is because you've been going to church, right? Uh, it, it, actually, actually, that last one was from Game Grumps. So. <laughs> it's time, buddy! It's time. It's time. Yes, buddy, my friend. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on P Film Podcast to do the Bartman into the second half of this supposed film podcast. The microphone keeps falling, so don't shake me, Eleanor. Please. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our low-fat, high-fiber, gluten-free movie of the week! And this week is the start of spoopy season, which means we hand the reins of this show over to the one and only Bunny, to celebrate Buntober. And what has he chosen for us this episode? The 1970 early Cronenberg film, Crimes of the Future. And I said it at the beginning of the, of the show, but I'm going to say it again. Bunny, why do you hate me? And like I said at the beginning of the show, one word, COVID exploitation. That's fair. Covers it covers it pretty well. Okay, so I'm really excited to talk a about summer this. of bottoming. Says that it pretty was well. Fun. <laughs> that was fun. Oh God, remember that Slenderman movie? It was so forgettable. I'm having a hard time remembering any of it. It was just all shot too dark. There's like, yeah, nothing to remember. <laughs> And and they did a they did a Dungeons and Dragons movie so badly it felt like a Disney Channel original movie. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm so excited to talk about this week's movie because it was written and directed by David Cronenberg, who is known for a lot of things. And I have a bunch of facts about David Cronenberg that people might not know. Bunny, if you have any, shoot them out too. Okay. So, okay. Uh, David Cronenberg, writer, producer, director, lover. He invented the game Pogs. He invented that. Yes, he was he actually did. he was actually boogie boarding in Hawaii when one day he saw these like milk caps and he said, "I'm going to create a game about them, and then I'm going to worship people's feet." And so, boom, Pogs came along. He also co-created the show Welcome Back, Cotter. Not a lot of people know that. That's why in the later seasons, uh, Horshack grew three extra arms. Yes. And started drooling this, like, green pus. That's because it, that, that was the Cronenberg effect. One of the common misconceptions about Cronenberg is that he's Canadian. And that's not exactly true. He was a Russian ballet dancer who mm -hmm. managed to defect to Canada. I saw that on back on in IMDb. the 60s. Yeah. I saw that on IMDb. Yeah. Uh, David Cronenberg, first white man ever to season chicken. Yes. This that's is a fact. True. 
that was that's a one hundred percent fact. We we will not discuss the seasonings per se, but yeah, yeah, you, you don't it need to know. It was that. technically seasoning. Uh, fun fact: David Cronenberg wrote this week's film. He also wrote the Aqua song "Barbie Girl." Yes. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. I'm plastic. It's fantastic. That was David Cronenberg yes. who wrote it. He uh, He's the original artist behind Ziggy. Yes. Not a lot true. of people know that. He was the designer in charge of creating Hello Kitty. There, there was a Saturday morning cartoon of David Cronenberg. Uh, uh, David Cronenberg, basically, it was scanners in space. Scanners in space, scanners. Yeah, and there was a cute little alien animal. That would be such a good little short film. Uh, grocery store scanners, and uh. It's just a like a grocery bagger who can make people's minds explode. Ah, oh. grocery store scanners. Yeah. Uh, David Cronenberg published a number of poetry books under his alias Maddie Stepanek. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Hey, uh, in 1973, David Cronenberg made history. Becoming the first person ever to look at a peach and say, that's a big ass. Yeah. That's an ass. As, and, as... That's, and that's what led Sir Mix-a-Lot to write Baby Got Back. Yeah. So. That's as a from- hobby. As a hobby. And to relax, unwind, you know, get away from the whole film industry thing. He likes to study proctology. Yeah. As a hobby. Yes. As a hobby. As a hobby. I mean, he may have dabbled, but he doesn't want to talk about, you know, the whole practicing without a license thing, you know, but. Bunny, are you there? Yes. Did you lock up? Yes, I did. For or a did second. we just get quiet? <laughs> no, uh, it it locked up a little bit. We also might have gotten quiet. Uh, I'm fucking exhausted right now. Yeah, I I am so damn tired. But but that's a different story. Uh, you know that song? Uh, I've got a brand new pair of roller yes. skates. You gotta. He was Melanie. He was the singer Melanie. He's a falsetto. It kind of it kind of figures. Yeah. David Cronenberg uh recorded that song, Brand New Key, under his another alias, uh Melanie. Uh David Cronenberg, the movie The Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure were loosely based on his life. Yes. It's crazy. A uh, fun fact, David Cronenberg lives alone with two cats that he named Mochi Mochi and Mr. Fluffy. Yes. He he also used to be lovers with the inventor of the saxophone. Yes, Adolphe Sax. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he ghost wrote the Disney movie Planes. Hey. Give it up, Dusty Crop Hopper. You're never going to win the big race. <laughs> You're afraid of heights. What type of plane is afraid of heights? Give it up. Uh, he told Sean Parker, the, the creator of... Uh, of uh, Napster, to tell Mark Zuckerberg to drop the V. But they cut that out of the social network movie. Yes. Because they didn't want to bring David Cronenberg, another character in it. Fun fact, David Cronenberg played Luke Danes in the hit TV show Gilmore Girls. Yes. Originally, there was going to be a lot more body horror in Gilmore Girls. 
Yes. So, David Cronenberg, the inventor of both the Snuggie and the ShamWow. David so, Cronenberg holds the distinction of being the only man Madonna won't sleep with. Exactly. Yes, I read that in Wikipedia. David Cronenberg was the original manager of Elvis Presley before Colonel Tom Hanks Parker. Yes. Came along in a desperate attempt to get another Oscar. David Cronenberg. Honka, honka, burning love had a totally different concept. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense because David, Cronen, David Cronenberg wrote, We're caught in a trap. And it was like a torture trap. Yeah. No? David Cronenberg wrote the first two Shrek movies. Yes. Not a lot of people know that. And finally, the last and he, fact And I, he was going to be Donkey, but the studio just wouldn't was. let him. The studio wanted like a more marketable face. Yeah. And finally, David Cronenberg... He, he just would have been like, onions have layers. You <laughs> yeah. know what else has layers? Parfait. Parfait has layers. <laughs> this freaking movie. This freaking movie. And my final fact about David Cronenberg. Huge brony. Yes. Huge. <coughs> huge. Big Pinkie Pie fan. Huge Pinkie Pie fan. Oftentimes you can see David Cronenberg just out like a con dressed as Pinkie Pie. It's weird. Yeah. Funny, I have said this a million times on this podcast, but the best part about this film is that it's like 60-something minutes. That's the best yeah. part about this movie. Yeah. You can tell that this is a film from the 1960s because it starts after only like 20 seconds of opening credits. Yes. That's also a plus. Because so many times, a Blank Studios production of a Blank Studios film. Blank Studios presents a Blank Studios film. Yeah. So it's, been, it's just been a, a long, strange relationship. This is the third watch. Okay? Yeah. The first watch was like, wow, this is just hot garbage. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And I wanted you to see it because I wanted you to see this horrible fucking movie. Yeah. And then I watched it again and I started picking up more of an appreciation of it because, like, you can't spend less money on a movie than this one. Like, what was the expense? Like, a few thousand for film stock ends and and a couple of packs of socks. I just realized that uh, the stream still says that this is episode 438 virus shark. Oh, shit. This to be clear for everyone who's watching right now on Twitch. This is episode 439 and we're doing the David Cronenberg film crimes of the future a film with so much foot fetish shit that i was expecting uh samuel L. jackson to show up yeah okay but now the, the first... wallet that said bad motherfucker on it but the foot fetish thing was like okay you were already being pretty open with your homosexual themes why did you suddenly decide to switch to a foot metaphor for the same fucking thing? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> you know, I, I, like, like, like you blurt out something and then start making euphemisms for it. Like, I'm gay, you know. Lighten the loafers, or or you know whatever else like yeah. So like I I don't get why. 
the foot switch. But I appreciate it for its low budget. I appreciate this is clearly the dude's college college campus. And and if I may, if I may interject here, the foot switch is my favorite Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen movie. Right <laughs> next to New York Minute. Right next to New York Minute with Bob's Burgers and Coach McGurk in it. Brendan. <laughs> Brendan. <clears throat> The funny thing is, is that when it comes to Quentin Tarantino, there was Quentin Tarantino, the amazing movie director, and then there was Quentin Tarantino, the movie director who has a foot fetish, and now you'll never forget that. Yeah. So re-watch, I rewatched Pulp Fiction recently, and it's like, oh my god. Someone giving someone a foot massage was mentioned like 50 times in this goddamn movie. How did I not notice that? Yeah, but it made for such an interesting conversation. Yeah. Marcellus Wallace threw Tony Rocky Horror out of a 10-story window because he gave his wife a foot massage? That was a huge plot point about giving Marcellus Wallace's wife a foot massage. How did I not see this before? Oh my god, the foot stuff is everywhere. <laughs> the opening credits to Death Proof is just a woman's feet. Yes. Oh, goodness. Okay. Uh, okay, back to the focus. Uh, Bonnie, uh, I was reading Wikipedia. Would bless Wikipedia, the savior of all podcasts. Uh It had a review of this film, which I think hits the nail on the head. Okay? Yeah. Such a good review. I didn't write down who wrote the review, but it's on Wikipedia. Uh, It said, Crimes of the Future is more fun to read about in synopsis than to watch, proving that it's possible to be boring and interesting at the same time. That is it right there. That that just nails it. And how many times are you watching and and wondering if anything that they're doing on the screen at that moment has to do with the voiceover that's going on at the same time? Yeah. It was filmed as a silent film, and then it was dubbed over by just one person being the narrator. And then some of the most annoying sounds you can ever possibly hear. Yes. Uh, They did it Hal P. Warren style. I expected Torgo to show up. (laughs) We cannot rape the child. The master would not approve. So that was fun. The but one thing least, I do, but at least for no budget, they tried something. I mean, it's not the same old low budget crap you usually get. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but it's like, also not THX one one three eight whatever. No, no, no. He he definitely went to more artsy route and. Also tried to be just just edgier than thou. Yeah, but it's no twenty thirty five. A world enslaved by a virus. Yes. The one thing that I love about this movie, I love i I love it when movies do this. It's set in the distant future, the year nineteen ninety seven, and I love that. Yes. So much. And I gotta say, for a 1970s film, they really hit the... It was pretty on the nose. Because in the beginning, you hear the narrator, and he says, It is 1997. The world is plagued by a deadly venereal disease. We all live in fear. Martina Hingis just won the Women's Wimbledon Tournament. 
The world is stunned by Bret Hart being screwed in Montreal. Pokemon cartoons are giving kids seizures. And everyone is singing the Aqua Song Barbie Girl. Boom! Callback! <laughs> Eddie Murphy was caught with a trans prostitute. I, there's one specific U.S. pop culture website that I have been to so many freaking times that I should just, for this podcast, I should just see if they want to sponsor us. Yeah. It's it's like U.S. dot U.S. dash pop culture.com or something like that yeah i have been there hundreds of times for this podcast it helps me so much <laughs> oh i love it uh buddy why don't you hit us with the plot of this film all right and see this time that watching it the third time i was like okay I am really going to just stop and pay attention and try to work through the actual plot of this movie that I had not on the two previous watches. Yeah. And if you watch the movie, you'll understand why. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh... So our narrator who I guess we're assuming is the guy in the picture here. Yes. If you can't say, can't describe it, if look at the thumbnail if you're watching on SoundCloud. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is Adrian Tripod. And he was an assistant to... Uh, Famed genius dermatologist Anton LaRouge. LaRouge. Now, skipping over a lot of weird explanation that may have explained things or may not have explained things, he had created a cosmetic that did not go particularly well and in fact wound up killing all of the women pop the, the whole entire female population the mature female population uh was it just the mature because there were no females no it was the mature female it, it was it was like the mature female population which is why there's a little girl at the end yeah I'll look it up on the Wikipedia, the savior of all. Uh, catastrophic plague resulting from cosmetic products, which has killed the entire population of sexually mature women. So, yeah, that's that's what it says on Wikipedia. And it also seemed like they were trying to create Men who could bear children. Yeah. Seemed sure. like part of the plot as well. At okay. least that one man was lactating. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, that's it. That's that's the plot. They They run around. They trade socks a lot. They really, really get into each other's feet. Uh, yeah. Which was some sort of a religious thing, I believe. Uh, At the end, there's a gang of pedophiles, and the movie gets real freaking creepy. Yeah, it gets real creepy at the end when when we find that they had created a young girl, I had thought. According to Wikipedia, because I watched this with Wikipedia in my hand so I could try and understand everything, uh, they kidnapped a five-year-old girl 
who has been exposed to chemicals intended to force her into puberty in order to impregnate her. That's what Wikipedia says. Yeah, and that's that's where it gets. Luckily, that was the end, but the end was just really creepy and weird, and we we could have done without that end, you know. But yeah. I I also think it was, well, first off, it's not like that idea. Maybe not exactly that same idea, but that idea has been kicked around in different sci-fi stories and things like that. You know, like I remember the movie Virus. Have you ever seen Virus? That's a public domain movie that's been running around. I don't I where, maybe. Where George Kennedy basically had to give Olivia Hussey the speech of like, well, you know, basically you're the only woman, so from here on out, we're going to be fucking you. Yeah. And you're just going to be, be producing children. That's your life. You know, and yeah. that idea has been in other stories as well. Making this a child puts a particular notch of sickness on it. You know, yeah. but there's uh, also the idea of you are saving the human race. I mean, there is no other option to save the human race. But this is still fiction, man. You you could figure out something else. To be clear, next week we'll be watching the new David Cronenberg film, Crimes of the Future. The only similarity is the title. It is a 100% completely different film. In Which no way raises the question whatsoever. why? I guess he just <clears throat> liked the title? Well, I don't know. I kind of suspect his last couple of movies. What the what were his last couple of movies? Oh. They were not nearly as big as previous movies. There was Cosmopolitan with what's his face, uh, the most recent Batman. Yeah, Pattinson, sparkly vampire, and that was, eh, that was not. I, I didn't finish it because it was just bore. You know, yeah, it had some interesting that. concepts, but it was just really boring. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking publicity stunt more than anything else. Yeah. I, uh, I have been in love with Rob Bat Battinson ever since frickin' The Lighthouse. Really? Oh. <laughs> ever since The Lighthouse, that man can do no wrong. So when the Batman movie came out, I, I was like, Good for you. Good for you, dude. Yeah. Good, freaking good for you. Suddenly, you're in like number one movies, and people care about you. You got away from the sparkly vampire. Good for you. Yes. Proud of him. As far as the cringe factor goes, Bunny, this is right up there with that one movie we watched, One Buntober, where Crispin Glover ad libbed a bizarre art film with a bunch of special ed education kids. Yes. What was that called? What is it? That's what I'm asking you, buddy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Abbott? <laughs> Freaking that movie. Yeah. The, yeah. As far as like the weirdness factor goes, those two movies. Boom. Yeah. Dude, at the drive-in this weekend, at the drive-in here in Oklahoma City, they're showing both it's. Really? Part one and two back to back. That's damn good. That's a good double feature. Yeah. I love that. Baby, are you trying to get into this podcast? Is that what you're doing, Cat? Ah! Yeah, Thank I you, just Kat. wasn't big on this version of it. Yeah. Yeah. I liked I liked it, but only because of only because of two things. Bill Hader and the kid from Stranger Things. Yeah. If it wasn't for those two people, I probably would have hated the new it. I, I don't think. Oh, they... and also, and also, uh, like the Pennywise wasn't Tim Curry, but he did a damn good job. Ten minute warning. Yeah, he had an interesting look. That yeah. definitely says Pennywise. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, I think that the... Honestly, I think it was better suited as a TV movie. Because... because <sighs> what was scary in it wasn't really scary. It was scary to kids. Yeah. You know, which is good in a book. Yeah. You know, that you're being chased by the teenage werewolf works in a book. Yeah. You know? In it's very difficult to translate that onto the screen. And like in this movie, they didn't really try. They went for the harder edge horror. Yeah. Which just didn't, it just didn't have the same vibe for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like, it. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just not a thing that I was responding to. Fucking David Cronenberg. I, I'm watching Crimes of the Future and yeah. I hear the dialogue. I wrote it down. I have been studying the stereoscopic card delivered by the man with the web toes. What do you want me to do with this information, David? Yeah. Oh, some of the dialogue was pretty amazingly just fucking weird. For, for, Jeez. And, and saying nothing. Saying nothing. This is one of those artsy films. This is, and, and a lot of artsy films do this, and it pisses me off. But this is one of those artsy fartsy films where the director makes everything purposefully vague so that all of the intellectuals can go, oh, this is what it means. Oh, let's go to Wikipedia. One possible reading of the film is that the audience is witnessing the mad minds of a dual personality schizophrenic pedophile. Adrian Tripod and Antoine Rouge is, are, are the same person interpreting the outside world as an imaginary futuristic reality where he is First, Adrian Tripod, the director of an institute known as the House of Skin, but is slowly getting closer and closer to a crime planned by him and a gang of pedophiles who he recruits during the scenes of the film and committed by him as Antoine Rouge later in the film. That's not what it says. Cronenberg's just being a freaking weirdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like maybe, whatever. <laughs> so, all of these like artsy fartsy people who went to film yes. school are now interpreting what the film means, but the director meant nothing. Yeah, no, I mean, like, it's an art film, like, accidentally. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's an art film because there is no money. Yeah. And there is no fucking money. Uh, yeah. So that's why. So it, it's it's like if you can't if you can't impress them with your brilliance, baffle them with your bullshit. You know, and that's what this yeah. is. It's like yeah. we have no money, so let's just get out there and just try to baffle them with our bullshit. Yeah, and get on. You know, for what is it? That's an art film. Yeah. Like it or yeah. not, but this was intended and planned. And this is exactly what that man meant to do. Whether you like it or not, that's a different thing. That's that's the life of an art film. This is like, how can we make a film on this campus? Yeah. In between classes. You know, this is the second film yeah. ever, and you can tell. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so that's this movie. Art film. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna. Mo I'm not gonna <clears throat> argue much if you want to call it an art film, but only accidentally. Yeah. Not on purpose. Yeah. So that is the 1970 film Crimes of the Future. Next. Next week, episode 440, we will be watching the new 2022 film, Crimes of the Future, starring actual actors that you can hear talk. Yes. Already, I like it better. Yeah. I... There are stories of 
next week's film being shown at the con film festival and people walking out and like fainting and vomiting and shit like that i think most of that is bs from crimes of the uh, future yeah really as far as i can tell as far as i can tell from the reviews that i've seen on like youtube and stuff like that the movie is about a guy who has the ability to grow extra limbs which he then cuts off for show he becomes famous for cutting off extra limbs it sounds very cronenbergian yes if anything it Classic might be a par- cronenbergian yeah it might be a self parody of himself yeah with the same title but uh that's next week but now that i'm looking back at yeah, this week, even I- seeing stills from that film it's like oh women Totally not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now that I'm looking back at this film, the highs and the lows, Mothers Against Saxophones, Aqua's song Barbie Girl, the Robonic Stooges, I gotta say, I think that this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode of this podcast. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear you say that because I felt the same way, but I didn't want to step on your toes. So I'm glad that you made that distinction. I didn't. I, you can have some of my root beer. That's fine. But I, I concur with your dis, with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams, and I am Reverend May Lynn, and on behalf of Eleanor and Natasha and Gizmo and Jaden and everybody else here in this way too small house. I just want to say one thing. One thing. Somehow, heartbreak feels good in a podcast like this. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tits. And you shreks. And you butt. And you butt. <laughs> Shocking. Don't do any sins. Don't do any sins. Okay. Wow. You're getting very Dick religious. Beer. <laughs> Root beer. Root beer. It's bark. I hate yeah. that name. B A R Q. Apostrophe S. How, how am I supposed to pronounce that? Barquois. What is it, French now? Barquois. Oh, what's wrong? He's good French. <laughs> Barquois. Ooh, Pinky's up for the classy stuff. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Skitty pop a doo wow cut and print and put it on a cookie. And put it on a cookie. Yeah. And-